Hello and welcome to the HID Buying Guide from Growlight Central. If you're in the market for an HID Growlight, you've probably noticed how many different options are in terms of bulbs, ballasts, reflectors. Choosing the right Growlight can be a bit overwhelming and with this guide we're going to help make that decision a little bit easier. In this guide we're going to look at a couple of key decisions you need to make. The first one is deciding between MH or HPS, then choosing the wattage, then deciding whether you want single or double ended bulbs or reflectors, and then choosing a reflector style. Let's start with the bulbs. There are basically two, MH or HPS. Which one do you want? Do you see the hint there? Use both. You get the best results if you use both an MH bulb and an HPS bulb throughout the whole grow. You can use the HPS bulb as the main overhead light and then hang MH bulbs along the side of your plants or you can flip it and use MH overhead and HPS along the side. Either way you get the best results using both bulbs throughout the whole grow. Now obviously this is a little more expensive than the other options because you have to get two reflectors or at least a naked socket and two ballasts. The next best results, and they're still very good, are using the MH bulb for vegging and then the HPS bulb for flowering. Now this saves you over the last one because you only need one reflector and you just switch out the bulb and also only one ballast. And this is a popular combination because modern digital ballasts can run both bulbs, so as I said, you only need the one ballast. And you would use the MH bulb, as I said, for cloning and vegging, and then the HPS for flowering. You get decent results if you use only HPS throughout the grow. If you really don't want to buy that extra MH bulb, uh, or you just want to go with one bulb, basically, use HPS. Right? They're not great during veg, but they're wonderful during flowering, so you know your plant growth will not be wonderful. You'll get, they'll be leggy, they'll be weaker, but you will still get good yields. And then the worst results are using MH throughout the whole grow, right? They work great for veg, of course, but they don't work well for flowering at all, so your yields will definitely suffer. Let's look at the wattage next. Um, basically, we recommend anything between 250 watts and 1,000 watts. Anything outside this range is just too inefficient for most common uses. Now, the 1,000 watt bulbs, they run very hot, so if you don't know what you're doing with uh, heat reduction, then definitely stick to 400 or 600 watt bulbs. In fact, that's what we recommend for most growers. And 600 are the most efficient. So that's the sweet spot. Here's a little table. We're not going to go through it completely. You can find this online. Um, you'll find this guide actually on our website at the link below in the description. And you can find this table there. You can also pause the video and, and take a longer look at it. But basically, it just shows different wattages and approximately how many plants you can grow under one bulb of that wattage and how high you should hang the light from the plants. All right, the next decision you need to make is choosing between single-ended or double-ended bulbs. Double-ended bulbs are basically more efficient, 25 to 30% more efficient. Um, so you get a higher PAR, uh, which is basically measures the light that is usable for plant photosynthesis. So it's the measurement that's the most applicable to plant growth. And uh, they also last longer. Um, they still have about 90% of their output after 10,000 hours of use. But there's a drawback, of course. Uh, these bulbs cost more. They cost about 50% more. And the reflectors, um, you're going to need specialized double-ended reflectors. They cost about twice as much as their single-ended counterparts. The bulbs also produce more heat. And for now, there's a limited selection of reflectors available. They just don't have as many styles for double-ended bulbs as they do for single-ended. Our recommendation is to use single-ended. Uh, for most growers, that's probably the best way to go at this point. You know, only go with double-ended if you have the higher budget, and of course you have to factor in the additional cooling costs there too. Now let's look at the different reflector styles. Basically, most reflectors do the job, and the differences aren't really that big. So this is not as critical as some people would have you believe. But each style does specialize in a certain situation. So if you have a certain growing situation, there might be one reflector that's a little better for the rest. And so the key is to find the reflector that's best suited for your grow space. And that's what we're going to help you with now. First thing we want to look at is should you get an air-cooled reflector or not, right? Air-cooled reflectors are ones that have the uh, vents on either side and you run the air straight through the reflector. And what that does is takes all the heat straight out of the grow room. It doesn't even enter the grow room. It goes through the reflector and gets pumped out. The thing is, these are really only good for small enclosed spaces because, uh, the, first of all, the glass in the front, it reduces the output and also the UV light from the bulb. The other thing is you have to use ducting to connect the different reflectors to each other and then to pump the air out. And that ducting becomes warm, obviously, with the hot air going through it. And that radiates into your grow room if you have a lot of ducting. And in a large space, you would. And that's why these air-cooled reflectors are really only good for small spaces. Now let's look at the single-ended reflectors. Uh, we'll start with just a regular socket. This is obviously good uh, supplemental lighting. Like I, I mentioned before, if you're using an HPS bulb above overhead and then you have 
MH bulbs hanging between the plants, you could use a mogul socket to just hang them in there. This thing is cheap, it's easy to install, but light goes to waste because it's just going in every direction, and if it's going in a direction where there is no plant, that's wasted light. Next one is a wing reflector. This is good for budget growers who have a well-ventilated space. You know, it's cheap. It's the cheapest reflector apart from that mogul socket. It gives you pretty good coverage and it gives you a strong light. Uh, it gives you good penetration. The, the main problem is that all the heat goes straight into your grow space, obviously, and that the reflector is only on the sides and not the ends, so any of the light that goes out the front or the back end is wasted. The next one is an umbrella reflector. This gives you a large coverage area and it gives you an even light distribution and that makes it good for for lighting large areas uh, with only a small number of lights. But because it gives you such a large coverage area, uh, you sacrifice in intensity and in penetration so the light is not as strong. And obviously the heat will escape into your room. But again, for small grow spaces, that might be a problem. For big ones, that's actually better than having the vented ones. All right, the air-cooled tube reflector. Now, this is an air-cooled reflector, obviously, and this is good for budget growers in a small space, right? Because it's the cheapest air-cooled reflector, and it's small. You do lose a lot of light, though, because as you can see, the reflector is actually pretty small on it, so a lot of the light just goes out the sides. And it only gives you a small coverage area, too. Next, we have the air-cooled hood. And this is, again, good for small and enclosed spaces. It gives you a large coverage area, and gives you very strong penetration, and strong light. It is the most expensive reflector, but it's the one we recommend for most home growers because it's uh, very efficient. You don't lose a lot of light. And uh, if you have a small space, then the vents are good. You know, you can get that heat out of your space. Next, the air-cooled tube hood. This is basically like the air-cooled hood from before, but with the tube, so the air vents through the tube. Uh, you have a bigger hood, much bigger hood, so you actually get a very large coverage area, and this makes it good for lighting large areas with a small number of lights, like the umbrella. But, like the umbrella, it has low intensity and low penetration, and it's a bit expensive too. So the difference between this and the umbrella is the venting, basically, and that the umbrella has a more even light distribution and even larger coverage area. All right, now let's look at the double-ended reflectors, and there's only three of them. First one is a wing reflector. Uh, basically, it has the same advantages and disadvantages as the single-ended wing reflector. It's the cheapest double-ended reflector. It gives you good coverage, good intensity and penetration, but the heat escapes into the grow room and the light escapes out the front and the back. Now, this is, again, good for budget growers with a ventilated space. Uh, here we have a XXL hood. So this is a large hood. It gives you a large coverage area, and like the other large hoods and the umbrella, it's good for lighting large areas with a small number of lights but it also sacrifices in intensity and in penetration. It's also pretty expensive, and this one is not vented, so all the heat will escape into your grow room. And finally, the double-ended air-cooled hood reflector. So this is a large reflector that covered with glass in the front, so it vents the hot air out of your grow room. It gives you a large coverage area, and it gives you intense light and a deep penetration, but it's very expensive. This is the most expensive reflector. Okay, that's it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Our website is growlightcentral.com. You can browse for some of these lights there. And as I mentioned earlier, in the description below, we have a link to this guide on our website. And in that guide, you will find uh, links to all of the products that we mentioned here. And that guide is also updated more often than the video. So, you know, if you're watching this video in a year or two after we posted it, uh, it might be a good idea to check out that guide and see some updated recommendations and maybe some new reflector styles in there. Thank you for watching and happy shopping.